The third generation Versa was redesigned and all new for the 2020 model year, which we did do a review on the 2020 Versa. This is the 2021 and it is a fantastic entry into this segment. We're gonna go through everything that we can with this vehicle. Stick with me, let's get into the review. All right, so there are only three trims with the Versa. You have an S, an SV, and the SR, which is a more sporty version. We're driving the SR. And before we continue to the exterior design, give me just one second. All right, guys, and before we jump into it, let me quickly say that in honor of this being a really inexpensive car, we are shooting this entire review on some really inexpensive cameras. These are the Canon M100s. I think they're really great for starting a YouTube channel if you're looking for a budget friendly camera and i did a whole review on these things on another channel i'll leave down in the description but uh let's get back into the car review all right guys now moving into the exterior design here like i said it is an all new design carried over from the 2020 model year we do have led headlights as well as some nice fog lights up there not led you have the dark chrome grill with Nissan's signature V. And you can definitely see some of those Nissan signatures with the pulled back hood, lots of nice little creases, the headlights, the fog lights. Let's move around to the side of the vehicle. Here on the side of the vehicle, we have 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels. Up front, we have 10 inch vented disc brakes. And in the rear are some eight inch drum brakes. Not the most high tech setup there, but uh, they get the job done. The side mirrors here are gloss black side mirrors. They're heated mirrors, and you also get the turn signal integrated into them. Along the trunk, you can see that deck lid spoiler. And here in the rear, nice LED tail lights. You got the Versa badge, the Nissan badge, and our SR badge. We also get a sporty lower fascia, and you can kind of see the exhaust down there, but it's not a sport tip or anything like that, that you would have to do aftermarket if it's something you're interested in. So overall, not the coolest or craziest design. It does fit into the Nissan lineup really well. It is a nice expressive design. So comparing it to the rest of the segment, it is a nice looking vehicle. But let's walk back to the back and check out that trunk and the cargo area. So you do have a button here on the trunk or a button on the key or a button inside to pop the trunk. But overall, it is a pretty good size. You have 15 cubic feet of cargo space here the rear seats are 60 40 split folding rear seats so you can fold those down and put longer things in there but for a subcompact sedan it does have a good amount of space all of my camera equipment fit just fine we had it filled with uh, chairs and stuff to go to soccer games all great stuff for day-to-day -day living there but let's keep moving let's go check out what's under the hood All right, guys, and under the hood here is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine, 122 horsepower, 114 foot pounds of torque. So not a lot on the power scale there. It is matched up to Nissan's Xtronic CVT. And we'll talk more about how that power feels when you're behind the wheel as we get behind the wheel and take this thing for a drive. But those are the power numbers. Let's talk about the EPA numbers really quickly. You're looking at 32 miles per gallon city, 40 miles per gallon highway. And again, we'll be talking about what we've been averaging as we get inside and take this thing for a drive. With that being said, I think it's time to jump inside. And we'll start off in the interior looking at these rear seats. Again, a subcompact car, I'm 6'1" bigger guy let's see how we fit in these rear seats not bad right this actually has a ton of space in it and uh, this passenger seat isn't too far from what my driver's seat position is i have to duck a little bit for the uh, roof line 
but it's not bad. Shoulder width is good. Feet are perfectly good. Knees good. For a subcompact car, this is one of the biggest in its class for interior volume, and it really shows here in the rear seats and up there in those front seats. Now, you don't get a ton of amenities here. You do get some USB chargers kind of up here in between the front and rear seats, but as far as amenities, that's about it back here. And again, I just fit back here but the kids fit back here just fine we had them three wide uh, multiple times throughout the week and no issues with that let's move up into the driver's seat all right guys now that we're in the front seats let's talk really quickly about this interior trim this is the sr interior with black and orange accents We've got the black cloth seats, really nice. We've got black leather with some orange stitching uh, on the dash and on the doors and the steering wheel. All, again, really nice for the price and segment. But uh, let me show you around a bit. So this SR does have the convenience package, which gives you heated front seats, and the heated buttons are right up here. You have auto climate control, which is part of the convenience package in the SV or SR and we get intelligent cruise control. We also do have push button start, which is standard on all trims, which is really nice. Let's uh, turn that on and get some AC blowing in here and uh, we'll go through the rest of the interior. So first off, this is a seven inch touchscreen display. Uh, it is on the cheaper looking side. It's not super bright. You do have some brightness settings here to make it a little bit brighter, but it doesn't get super bright or super contrasty, but it's a decent setup for this market. You can see we do have a camera button up here just for some settings. If you put it in reverse, we do have that rear view camera. Below that, we have a USB type A port, an auxiliary port, and an accessory charging port. You've got a little cubby down here behind the gear shifter, that push button start button. And then the gear shifter itself, which is just a traditional gear shifter with a low gear and a button back here to engage basically a sport mode. You can see that black leather here on the dash with the orange stitching. We also have some accents with this carbon fiber looking material, obviously not carbon fiber in this vehicle. Moving to the steering wheel, we do have a lot of buttons on here. Uh, we have buttons to access the infotainment system, buttons to access the driver information display, and buttons for all the cruise control functions. And that driver information display is here. You've got the digital display with the analog gauge, and you can flip through different menus here. Whatever best suits you as a driver. Also with the infotainment, with the SV and SR trims, you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We get lots of standard features, including Nissan's exceptional safety features, offering the most standard safety technology in its class. And this is the most roomy interior in its class. Like I said, in the rear seats, lots of room. It has the most leg room out of any in its class for the front seats, which is fantastic very comfortable to sit in, very comfortable to drive. And with that, let's jump into a quick tangent. All right, so quick tangent. There is a difference between a tight and um, compact interior and an uncomfortable interior. I am a bigger guy, I'm 6'1", and uh, there are a lot of interiors that are just too tight for me, I'm just too big for but that's a different thing than an interior that is uncomfortable. There are big vehicles that I think the interior is uncomfortable, and there are small vehicles that I think the interior is uncomfortable. I say this because I just got another comment about how big I am and me ragging on a certain vehicle, saying that it was uncomfortable to sit in, to drive, and the commenters, uh, takeaway was that I'm just too big for the vehicle and I'm ragging on it because uh, it's a vehicle I shouldn't buy in the first place. That is not the case. Uh, this is a small vehicle, a compact vehicle. It has a roomy interior for such a compact vehicle, but it is comfortable to sit in. It's comfortable uh, driving position. You can get to the steering wheel good. I can be back far enough and low far enough where my legs are comfortable. That's not the case in 
every vehicle. And if I rag on a vehicle being uncomfortable to sit in and uncomfortable to drive, I'm talking more about ergonomics like your seating position uh, with your steering wheel, with your legs to the pedals. It doesn't work for me and that's not necessarily doesn't work for me as it's too small, just there's something about it. Either the seat doesn't go down far enough or the seat's not all that comfortable or it's shifted in the way that you have to sit. But I just wanted to get that off my chest and let you guys know that there is a big difference in having a small interior that's comfortable and having an uncomfortable interior, no matter if it's small or large. With that, let's jump into some driving. Let's get this thing out on the road. Let's talk about how it is driving with that power, the safety features in this thing. Then we'll talk about price and competition. Then I'll start giving you my final thoughts and we'll wrap the video up there. Let's get into it. All right guys, so let's get this out on the road. First thing you notice is that for a compact car, it is a really nice vehicle to drive. Uh, it doesn't feel really cheap. Again, the seating position is really nice. The steering wheel is pretty nice. We do have a lot of great amenities, including um, some safety features with the cruise control and different sensors and stuff like that. It's not a super fast car, but it is a nice engaging drive. You can really put it into some corners and push out of it. Again, it doesn't have a ton of horsepower. Obviously, that's not what this is meant to be but it uses the horsepower it does have very well. Again, a very engaging drive in that sense. We do have that little sport mode that definitely does do something. It does work. You can feel it uh, shifting into a new mode. Let's uh, stop here for just a second on this little bit of a straight road and we'll do a quick acceleration test. Ready, set, go. does not like to get up and go. We're at 40, 50, 60. And perfect timing because we're out of straight road. <laughs> so obviously exhaust doesn't sound great. Uh, it doesn't just like speed off the line. That's again, not what this thing's meant to do, but figured it's nice to throw in a review if you're interested but the steering is really nice. The suspension feels good. So when you throw it into corners at a high rate of speed, it does feel uh, competent. Fuel economy wise, we did see those fuel economy numbers and you probably got a sneak peek at what I've been averaging for the full week. And that's 31.3 miles to the gallon, which is really fantastic. There are vehicles that do better, especially hybrid vehicles, but they're gonna cost you a lot more money for the money that this is, and as much fun as it is to drive, even though it's not quick, that's a pretty good number. Now again, you do get those safety features that we mentioned before. You also get intelligent cruise control that we mentioned before, and it's easy to set. You just turn your cruise control on, set your cruise control, and you can pick the distance at which you wanna be following the person in front of you. Just like any other radar guided cruise control, it's easy, it's really nice and convenient to have, and it works just fine. But it's a great addition to a vehicle at this price point. And I'm not really sure what else to say about it. Again, I think it's a good car, it drives really well. Let's pull back over and we'll talk about the price of this vehicle and the competition that's out there. And then I'll give some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap the video up there. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so price and competition, let's get into it. And while we're looking at the phone, let's go ahead and show off uh, one of our designs. This has actually been tweaked because the camera cutout uh, interfered a little bit there, but you can go check out some of our merch down in the description. But let's talk about the price here. First off, the S, the base trim with a five speed manual transmission. Yes, you can still get this in a manual transmission at its very base is 14,000. 980 and that is if not the cheapest it is one of the least expensive vehicles on the market that you can buy brand new very cool very uh good stat to have because it is a nice vehicle 
The S with the Xtronic transmission is 16650. The SV, which only comes in the Xtronic transmission, is 17790. And the SR that we're sitting in, again, only comes with the Xtronic transmission, is 18390. This one that we're in here has the convenience package and a couple other um, add-ons and has a base price of still just under $20,000. Which again, for everything that you get here with the price of most vehicles these days, I think that $20,000 mark is really incredible. So what does it compete with? It competes with vehicles like the Hyundai Accent, the Chevy Sonic, the Kia Rio, and the new Mitsubishi Mirage. There's also a lot more in there. This is a very competitive segment, but out of all of them, this is definitely in my top three. I also like that Hyundai Accent. I also like the Kia Rio. There were some good ones like the Ford Fiesta that are no longer being sold, but all in all, if you're looking for a really inexpensive vehicle that still is a nice vehicle, this is a great option. Let's jump out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap the video up there. And again, I think the Versa is a really fantastic option if you're looking for a first time vehicle for a high school student, a college student, or if you're just looking for a vehicle that uh, can get you from point A to point B and be inexpensive for you, but still give you a little bit of amenities. Obviously it's not gonna be the best thing out there, but uh, for what it is and what it costs, I really did enjoy my week with it. I do like the Versa overall. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Nissan Versa. Go check out TXGarage.com if you're looking for more written reviews as well as news and event coverage. Go check out our new merch store if you're interested in some Texas Garage merch. We've even got some stuff that's just plain Texas that has nothing to do with Texas Garage, but uh, some cool designs if you're interested in checking those out. But with that, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.